Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, today I'm gonna to be talking about three different brands of canning lids that I've been using the most in the past couple of years. And I'm gonna give you the pros and cons of these. So the, this is beyond the ball and cur, which I still use because I still have a good stock of them when we piled up on them several years back when they went on sale for like $2 a box. But since then, I have had, uh, I have bought a lot of Tatler lids, had a bunch gifted to me, I love them. And then I also have some superb brand lids and some four jars lids. Both of these were sent to me by the companies and I did not ask for them. They just showed up at my post office box one day. So I was really thrilled to try them. And so I've been using those for over a year now, I'm pretty sure. And then recently Superb just sent me some more lids. So what I wanna talk about is the pros and cons of each one to help you decide which ones are gonna be best for you based on these. So the first one I'm gonna talk about are the Tetler lids. As you can see right here, these are white. They used to come in different colors. There was a time you could get them in red, and then there was a time more recently you could get them in a mint color, but I think now they're only available in the white. These have been around since the 1970s, I believe. Two biggest benefits of the Tatler lids is that they are indefinitely reusable. Now, the rubber gasket may wear out over time, but this part is super cheap to replace, but I have yet to need to do that. I, have a, I did buy, when I was first stocking up on these, I did buy extra rubber gaskets. Just have them on hand, but I just haven't needed to do that yet. And anyway, um, as long as you don't chip the edges and stuff, they can last indefinitely. They are a great lid. So though they are more expensive to buy up front, the longevity of them quickly pays for itself. So I've reused the same lid. So this one I'm showing you is brand new so you can see what it looks like. Uh, one of the downfalls to these is like when you're counting things like tomatoes or anything with a strong color is it can discolor the lids. I don't really care. As long as I get them clean and ready to reuse again, I'm fine with that. So I've been reusing, even though I have a lot of new ones put up, I've been re reusing the same lids for years, over and over again without issue. And one of the other benefits is that they are made entirely in the US. Now for a couple of cons on the Tatler lids is that, well, you do have two parts. So that can make it a little more fiddly to have to work with, but it's as simple as putting your gasket on here or even laying it on the edge of your jar and then putting the lid in place. And then it, it is a learning curve. So when it comes to putting the bands on there, there's a different process than you would use for any of your metal lids. And that is when you first put the lid on before it goes into the counter, you only put it on as tight as that. You do not hold the jar with your other hand. This is a tip I don't think they give in the instructions. They just put it on, they say finger tight. Well, that's gonna vary per person. But one thing that will not vary is this. If you have it on something that's the, where it can slide easily enough, not some kind of rubber mat, you simply turn the band until the jar moves freely, and then that's just, you don't want it any tighter than that, or any looser for that matter. If you put the lid, the bands on these too tightly, they will explode. I've had it happen to me when I was canning tomatoes one year, and I can hear, hear them going pop, 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 you know, just blowing off everywhere. So I went to pull them out of the canner thinking they were done doing that and one blew up on me as I was pulling it out of the canner. It's all about the tightness of the band. Don't be afraid of it. As long as you just practice this simple little trick that will prevent that from happening. But then here's the other step, which makes it again a little more fiddly is that once you pull these out of the canner, some people will let them vent for a couple minutes. I usually do this, I, I take all the jars out, then I'll go through in the same order that I pulled them out, and then you go and tighten your bands down. Obviously, you need something to hold on to. Using some oven mitts works really well for me, even though they're massive on my hands. Just uh, put those on. There's the Of Glove, and there's some other brands out there, cheaper you can get. You just put it on then as tightly as you normally would 
for a, a metal lid and then you let it cool down and then the jar should all be sealed. It may take a little practice getting used to this and a lot of people recommend uh, by when you're canning other things, leave a couple of openings to just fill a jar with water and then try using your tatler lids that way and just keep practicing with that so you don't have to worry about uh, wasting any food. Um, you know, usually that's food you can either freeze anyway or just eat through right away or recan if you have to. Let me talk about the Superb brand lids next. So one thing about the Superb brand is that they are definitely thicker than either the four jars, the ball, or the curve because I did pull out my kitchen scales and weighed them and you can definitely feel the difference in these. Besides the fact that they're thicker and they seem far more sturdy, these are all made 100% in the US and I definitely appreciate that aspect of the Superb brand lids. Now these are going to be more expensive than any of your other metal lids. Uh, part of that is because they are made entirely in the U.S. and there is just more material in these. But one of the other cons I found is that when I tried to use these again for canning, so I canned with them, then because that's what I've been doing in the past year is doing some experiments, you reusing of metal lids for canning to see how well that works. And yes, I know people say that's taboo, but I know a lot of people that have been doing it for years. For all the other ones, I've never had any issue with them sealing, even if I've canned with them a couple of times. But with this brand, it's very rare that I can get it to seal again on a second run for canning. However, I've had no issue getting them to vacuum seal, which is typically what I do with my used metal lids as I reuse them again, but for vacuum sealing. Though my mission this year was to do a lot of trial runs reusing the lids. In fact, this year when I canned my passion fruit zucchini and a few other things I've canned up this year, I've only been using recycled lids and trying all the different brands. And so far, Ball, Kerr, and Four Jars, not a problem getting them to seal. Just the superb brand. I'm just sharing with you my experiments and what I'm, I've done. I'm not recommending you necessarily do that. So you candy Nazis out there, please do not freak out. I'm just sharing my own experiences. So anyway, there's that. But regardless, even if you don't, you're totally against using metal lids for canning again. They are all great when it comes to vacuum sealing dried goods like I have here with my tomato flakes. Uh, this is, by the way, is chicken bone broth that I from a chicken I'd cooked up and then cooked the bones for several days and cooked them down and then dried, dehydrated the bone broth and sealed it up. And then these sweet peppers here, these organic mini sweet peppers I get from Misfits. I've been putting some of these up and dehydrating them. So I vacuum seal all my dehydrated goods. And by the way, if you want a video where I show many different options for vacuum sealing and then also share my favorite way to do so, I'll link to that video in the description box down below. So don't forget to click on either more or show more somewhere right down here below the video screen so you can find any links I put in there, which will include the product the company link so i'll put the the one for four jars the one for tatler which when it comes to the tatler i know the best price i've seen on these is debt is directly from their website and then also for the superb uh, i think they have a direct i know you can get them at lehman's you can get them on uh, amazon i don't know if any of those play which place might be less expensive because these were shipped to me for free. I didn't have to pay for them. But all in all, I am happy with the Superb lids. They've been, they've worked great for everything else I've used them for, just not for re -canning. And now the four jars lids, uh, these are going to be better in price. I do actually really like these lids. I was a little skeptical at first because I didn't know anything about them when they were given to me, then realized a whole bunch of other channels also got these and really love them. And Ever since I've been using them, I've had absolutely no issues. Again, they vacuum seal really well after using them for canning, and they seal very well when reusing for canning. However, one drawback to these, just one, and that is they are currently being made in China. Now, the company is U.S. based. They were founded here in the United States, 
But what a lot of people don't understand is when a company gets founded like that, it can cost a lot of money to invest in a factory to start pumping these kind of things out. And so for now, yes, the lids are all being made in China. In fact, I believe it even says so on the box for anyone who's willing to pay attention. That doesn't mean it's all bad, but sometimes people have to outsource until they can get enough money where they can actually may have their own factory to be able to do this themselves. And from what I've heard through the grapevine is that is their goal is to bring it all back to the United States. So initially I was saying I wouldn't, when I first learned about that, that I wasn't gonna buy any because they're all made in China. But then when I got to thinking about the fact that, well, that's what they're having to do right now. And the only way they're gonna be able to make enough money to bring it all over to the United States is for people to purchase their product. So other than that, that I have had absolutely no issues with them. I love those lids quite a bit. And because of their different pros and cons, I can't really say which one I like better. I think the reason the superb brand lids have a tenant don't work as well for recanning is because they are a sturdier lid. They make a louder pop when they seal and when, but when you go to open them, no matter what kind of jar opener you're using, you are more likely to bend the lid than you are with any of your other metal lids. And I think that's where the issue comes in when you try to go recan with them. But for some reason they work for vacuum sealing. So, you know, there's your pros and cons. You can weigh it out. Maybe you can get a little of each and then try them for yourself and see what you think. But at least that gives you a start where you can weigh it out and decide which lids are best for you. And I think that's it for this video. I just wanted to go over those pointers. So I hope you enjoyed this and it just set you on the right track so you can consider what direction you want to go as far as getting more canning lids or if you're just getting into canning. Oh, and please share any thoughts, ideas, suggestions in comments down below. And thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.